If you want sunshine and warmth when at home the weather is cold and wet and miserable, Venus, flying the Norwegian flag, will take you in comfort to Madeira in three days. Three days of rest, fun and wonderful food. An excellent start to your holiday. Life on board can be so exciting. The unpacking, discovering the ship, a visit to the shop, no duty or purchase tax, remember, all while the engines beat below like a great heart, moving the vessel swiftly and safely on its journey. The captain has had a lifetime at sea, but not so the passengers. Not all of them, perhaps, have good sea legs. But in recent years, there has been introduced a device that helps. The stabilizers are switched on, and rolling is cut to a minimum for the comfort and enjoyment of all. Some people think a deck is made for a deck chair and a doze in the sun. They may be right. But there are facilities on board for those who prefer a little gentle exercise and a chance to make new friends. If you think shuffleboard too energetic, what about coits? Mild exercise like this helps the sea air to whip up a fine appetite. Already the sun is warm enough to turn your thoughts to long, cool drinks. And so, after your game, or your rest in a deck chair, into one of the lounges to give your order to the steward. One of the high spots of the day is luncheon, with its famous Norwegian cold table, from which you help yourself to a bewildering variety of delicious foods as attractive to the eye as they are to the palate. In the evening, a drink before dinner, another meal for the connoisseur, and then a stroll in the moonlight, a book in the lounge, or dancing to the ship's orchestra to round off another happy day. And so very pleasantly the time passes. Madeira is in sight, and another phase of your holiday is about to begin. Venus is entering the bay of Funchal. It is said that the inhabitants set their watches by the time of her arrival. Anyway, whether or not you believe that, it is certainly true that the seaborne merchants of the island, with a variety of wares, from cane chairs to embroidered tablecloths, will be there to meet the ship before she drops anchor, whilst the entertainment side of the reception is provided by small boys diving for silver coins, which they seldom fail to retrieve as they flash down through the warm blue water. Now Venus is at anchor, and amid the incessant chatter from the small boats, the business of disembarking goes on. It is quick and simple. Formalities are few, and the baggage, which is taken care of by the hotel porters who meet you on board, goes ashore in a barge and is delivered to your hotel. 
passengers descend the gangway to the waiting launches and are borne swiftly away to the landing stage. Taxis wait to take you to the hotels, any of which can be reached in a few minutes. The new avenue, situated at the top of the beautiful Avenida Ariaga, is a modern hotel facing south and standing high above the sea. Here, visitors enjoy the care and comfort that are characteristic of Madeira. hotel close by and surrounded by its own beautiful garden stands on the cliff edge and from one of its terraces there is a view from one tip of the bay to Reed's Hotel at the other. Standing a little further back and with a view not only of the bay but also of the imposing mountains behind is the Miramar Hotel, a pleasant friendly place whose guests return year after year in the knowledge that they will always be welcomed. On the lawn in front of the hotel annex, you may continue the gentle art of sleeping off a perhaps too enthusiastic appetite. With a back cloth of bougainvillea hanging from the terrace of the Savoy Hotel, who can deny the flower girls their offerings of lilies, camellias, orchids and other exotic blooms? A huge bouquet costs only a shilling or so. But then, flowers grow in this subtropical climate as quickly and prolifically as do weeds in our own. The Savoy, the largest hotel, with a gay informal atmosphere, has many rooms with private balconies. But for those without, there are the wide public terraces running the whole length of the hotel where tea and coffee are served in the sunshine on perhaps a hot January day when the sea shines like gold beneath a brilliant sky. The Savoy has its own swimming pool and its many visitors may do little but lie on a mattress acquiring a rich brown tan. Some may be more energetic. In the hotel grounds is a tennis court a set or two, a swim in the sea, a rendezvous on the terrace, what more can one ask of any place? And last, but by no means least, Reeds, one of the world's most famous hotels. From the terrace or the window of your room, the whole bay stretches out before you and sets the mood for your holiday. Perfect service, perfect surroundings. And always in the hotel garden, the rich exotic blooms of hibiscus, camellias, lilies, and the scent of roses. Reeves Hotel has its own swimming pool and sunbathing terraces too. Like the Savoy, it has a lift to take you down to the sea. From Reeds, if you feel adventurous, you can try your hand at water skiing. Experts say it's one of the most exciting sports in the world. And whilst it's unlikely that at your first attempt you will equal the skill and poise of this practiced skier, it's well worth trying. And if you do fall in the water, there's always a friendly sun to warm you when you come out. It is difficult, isn't it, to believe that these pictures were taken in the depths of a British winter and only three days' journey from England. and the sea are wonderful, but there are other things to enjoy. 
Funchal itself, for instance, surely set in one of the most beautiful bays in the world, rivaling Naples or San Francisco. Take a walk in the town, starting by the Governor's Palace. This is one of the first buildings you see when you step ashore, and most imposing it is, with its contrast of white wall and black basalt. Madeira has belonged to Portugal since it was discovered by Zarco in 1419. This is the statue erected to his memory. Avenida Ariaga, we meet Prince Henry the Navigator, grandson of John of Gaunt. It was he who sent Zarco on his voyage of exploration. Wander through the shady narrow streets, full of interest and unexpected beauty. Pause for a moment at the English church, where the Anglican community worship. There's a Scots kirk, too, close by. Take your first look at the magnificent Praça do Municipio and admire the harmony of the cool buildings in which the affairs of this island are conducted and the graceful lines of the churches in which its people worship. As you pass through the streets and pause in the squares or as you leave or enter your hotel, always you will meet the flower girls of the travel poster and you'll find it difficult to resist the temptation to buy their sweet flowers, just as you will find it difficult to resist the persuasive shopkeepers. For afternoon tea, a book from the library, tennis, or some quiet putting, there is the British Country Club, with its shady, cool lawns and clustered wisteria. Traditional hospitality enables visitors to Madeira to join for a nominal subscription. During the war, a generation grew up in Britain that had never seen a banana. Here, they grow in thousands, all the year round. And there are oranges, too. And lemons, and prickly pears. The stalls in the market are piled high with all this locally grown fruit, and it's so cheap to buy, if you want to bring some home with you, ask for it to be sent direct to the ship. You'll find the fruit waiting for you on board, specially chosen to last the journey home. During your stay, you'll want to make a tour of the island, and the coaches operated by the tourist office offer a comfortable means of doing so. You can, of course, hire a car if you prefer. be fascinated by the terraced mountains. Every possible inch of land is brought under cultivation, as indeed it must be if the population of 270,000 people on this small island are to survive. This is Camera de Lobos, known now as Churchill's village, for Sir Winston came here to paint during a recent visit to Madeira. interesting are the simple people of a foreign land, and these fishermen of Camara are no exception. 
They have their joys, their fears, their loves, their hates, and their faith too, as we see by the names on their gaily painted boats. God be with you. Happy journey. A prosperous year. God bless you. Just beyond Camera are the great cliffs of Cabo Girao, the second highest sea cliffs in the world. From this terrace at the very edge of the cliff, we can see the blue sea lapping the shore nearly 2,000 feet below. Stretching back to the distant horizon, the route we've just traveled. The scene is full of beauty and majesty. We move on to the Grand Curral in the heart of the island and admire it from the end of the motor road. The journey on to the village is by mountain path and because of its remoteness was chosen in olden days to hide the women of the island when the bold bad pirates swaggered ashore. golf course at Santo da Serra provides a magnificent view of the 6,000-foot Ruivo Peak. But this golfer keeps his eye on the ball. We travel on to the remote northern coast, where the landscape is even more spectacular. Great mountains, waterfalls, lonely villages, and a surging sea that laps the rocky coast. Only a few miles from Funchal, we might be at the end of the world. Hell's River, running over its stone-strewn course to the sea, is typical northern scenery, as wild and barren as Funchal is orderly and cultivated. important part in the economy of Madeira. They grow beside the streams and are cut, tied into bundles, and then put back into water until they're required for stripping, and eventually making into a variety of goods exported to all parts of the world. handed down from generation to generation. On to Porto da Cruz, still on the north coast. The famous Table Mountain near Feial. Before we turn inland towards the village of Cruzingas. Cruzingas so picturesque, with its clean, painted cottages softening the grim mountains behind. In these mountains and valleys, we find groups of women and girls sitting on the doorsteps of their cottages at work on some beautiful tablecloth or blouse or dress. Fine embroidery is the speciality of the women of Madeira, and whilst the industry is controlled from and the goods sold in the town, most of the work is done in the countryside. It was an Englishwoman, Miss Phelps, who first taught embroidery to the Madé Rennes nearly a hundred years ago. Today, you can see the exquisite perfection of their work. In Madeira, it's not expensive to buy, and few visitors leave without a piece packed in their baggage. It would be nice if we could take home a Madeira garden, too. This is a famous one, and one of the loveliest in the world. If you visit it, as you can do, 
Remember the silver tree, the protea flower, the blossom on the way gandia, the strelitza regina, the Judas tree, the fine camellias, and of course the orchids. <laughs> Back to Funchal at the end of our tour. And what better than to leave the coach at the top of the hill and travel back to sea level by toboggan. The run takes some 20 minutes and it's the traditional end to a tour of the island. perhaps less exhilarating way of getting about is by hammock, until quite recently a common form of travel. Or perhaps a ride in a bullock cart. You will certainly admire the snowy white suit and Cambridge blue boater of the driver. Madeira is famous for its wine, fortified, yet gentle and delicate, slipping easily down the throat. Here, in a wine lodge in Funchal, workers empty goat skins of unmatured juice into casks. Murals in the wine lodge show the picking and pressing of the grapes in the country districts before the fresh juice is poured into the casks to mature. used for wicker. Here bottles are being covered with an attractive outer casing of basket work. All visitors to Madeira are welcomed in the wine lodges and are invited to try a glass of wine. To suit your taste, you can obtain a pale dry sessile, good as an aperitif, a verdello, medium dry, a fuller and medium sweet boal, or a sweet malmsey. Then luncheon, the cold table of the Savoy, the decorated tongues, Russian salad, and dozens of delectable dishes to tickle the palate. The special meal is served on the terrace, and the guests wisely try a bottle of delicious Portuguese white wine, cool and welcome on a warm day. cocktail before dinner. Fred, the head barman, mixes one of the best dry martinis in the world. After dinner, a dance in the same hotel. 
or at the Savoy, where the guests are entertained by a flamenco dancer. drive to the gaily decorated nightclub at Camera, where, as so often in Madeira, the flavour is of ships and the sea. And so, for the last time, the folk dancing of Madeira and the traditional music that goes with it. When your stay on the island is a thing of the past, a happy memory, this tune will remind you of sun and warmth and color, of your holiday in Madeira.